Yes. It's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be good. Hold on one second. Yeah. Check, check. <laughs> so I'm honored to have you here. Thank you, know, you. I'm honored to be here. We got a lot covered. Um, I know you just came out with a project. Facts. So Shout yeah, out yeah. to the Snow Goons. They uh, we we linked up and I released my. You know I don't want to say my first album because I've been making music for like ten years, but we released a dope project August 25th this past August. That was then. This is now off of Goon Music. Shout out to the Snow Goons and Nabro Entertainment. Shout out to Sean Strange. The album is fire. You, you can get it on all social social media. You can get it all on, on all streaming sites. But also, um, if you want that hard copy physical, make sure you go to IntelMakesMusic.com. That's real, man. So like, I feel like the albums are a reflection of us. I feel like they're a huge part of what we go through, and the album is like our story. So like. How'd you come up with the title? And like, why'd you even make this album? That's a great question. And you're the first person, probably, I think the first person to ask me that um, on the radio. <clears throat> so at the time when I was making the project, right? And the answer to the other question, why I made it, is because music is therapy to me. You know what I'm saying? When I'm going through a lot of things, creating music is how I alleviate that stress. Um, so when I was in the process of creating this album, it wasn't really an album yet. It was just me creating songs, um, dealing with whatever I was going through at the time. And the title came about, it was my mantra at the time. You know what I mean? Like that was then, this is now like whatever negativity, whatever bad things had happened to put me where I was at. You know what I'm saying? Like it, I had to put it in the past and focus on living in the moment, moment to moment. And once I started doing that, a lot of great things started happening and opportunities and days just got brighter. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that came about. That's real. Yeah, just the whole title. That was then, this is now. I feel like it's an evolution. I feel like you're still in tune with the past, but you're moving forward. And I feel like it's good advice to just anyone who's like involved with anything. Facts. That's looking back and like, oh man, my life. I don't know if I got this. And then you can just hit him with that title. Yep, <laughs> that was then. This is what you're going to do now. It's what like you, you, now? You, you've already been through what you're going to be through or what you've been through. So what are you going to do now? Because all we have is now. You know what I'm saying? We get so caught up with the future, which hasn't happened yet. And we get caught up in our past, which is, you know, already happened. So it's like but all you ever have is now. So that was then. This is now. What are you going to do now? That's real. I like that, man. Thank you. I feel like art is also a major part of what we represent. Of course, we'll get into a little bit of your story, but to just to keep to talking about the album, what's your goal when you make music? What's my goal when I make music? Before, when I was younger, it was to it was to get on and be famous and make money and be rich and you know get the bling and do all of that Migo stuff. Uh, <laughs> now. It's just, I don't know, I get a certain type of peace when I'm sitting down writing a song or when I get a, a good beat that's just massaging my soul. Mm. And even more recently, you know what I'm saying, my grandmother, shout out to my grandmother, my paternal grand, shout out to both my grandmothers, but my paternal grandmother, she's real religious, and she always be telling me, pray, 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 pray. And recently, I, you know, I've been going through some, some ups and downs and, you know, with this music stuff and... I realized that one of the things that I really want from music is I want to be able to make it with my children. I want to be able to, you know, at first, hopefully they, they, you know, they like it when they get older, but when they, you know, when they're young, they introduce them to all different types of music. You know what I mean? Not just hip hop, but definitely hip hop. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. You know, everything else that comes along with the continued journey of being a musician would be great. You know what I'm saying? The, the accolades and the, the respect, the admiration, and the financial aspect of it would be great. But right now, I just want to be have the uh, the ability to continue making the music that I'm making, and then one day to make it with my children. That's real. So 
So when you say make it with your children, do you want them on records? Do you want them to be part of your journey? Do you want them to be at shows? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, like okay. the whole nine. And, you know, granted, until they get to the age where they start making decisions on their own, if they decide this isn't for me, you know, then that's on them. Right. They're missing out. But um, I definitely want them to be in the studio, you know, when they're younger, to see what I do, be involved in what I do, and uh, hopefully take an interest because there's so many different elements to the music industry that is is it's not just being a rapper you know what i'm saying that yep. there's there's talent coordinators there's makeup artists there's engineers there's sound designers there's publicists there's directors there's so much that goes into being uh in in the music industry so you know i just want them to be exposed to all the right aspects of it mm. that's really cool i can see it now i can see it <laughs> me too man <laughs> That's why I'm keep. I'm still going. I'm still here. I think a lot of people would buy merch too. Like if you have one at the merch booth, and they got like the Intel pins and the, the hats and stuff. <laughs> like you just, it. That's real, man. It's in the works. <laughs> uh, speaking of kids, a lot of us get into music at different times, whether it be writing, whether it be listening to it. When did you get into music, and then when did you know you wanted to make music? When did I get? I got into music. I mean, you mean like when I started doing it or when I started listening to it? Yeah, yeah. Like, like me personally, it was, it was Michael Jackson. Okay. I was like seven, and just seeing everything he did was like this big production, and it was so inspiring. Like the, the videos were like movies and facts. The so Michael went it, in. I was just like, oh man, I just want a piece of that, even if I couldn't exactly emulate it. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that kind of was it an album? Was it like somebody? It was. It was definitely. It was Eminem. I'm not okay. even afraid. I could tell you right now, right off the back, it was Eminem. But uh, the first album I listened to, first music that I listened to, like myself, like, okay, I'm gonna sit down and listen. Uh, it was a mixtape, and it had like all the classes mm -hmm. on it. It had like um, Troy and, and um, some old Wu Tang joints and like Gangstar records. Like, it was classic. Okay. Then after that, a friend of mine gave me Deltron 3030 which I listened to that mm -hmm. over and over again. It's one of my favorite hip hop albums. And that album kind of made me go like, wow, you don't have to just rap about things that people know about. You can rap about space and you can make stuff up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I thought that yeah. was pretty cool. Um, but it was the Marshall Mathers LP. I remember I went over to my cousin's house and he was like, yo, you want to hear this song? And I was like, what is it? And he was like, just sit down. And he played Kim and he mm -hmm. acted it out for me. And then I would listen to that song without him being there, and I would act it out myself. And, and that was that. And I listened to the album front to back, and I was like, yo, this is, this kind of makes me want to pick up the pen. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But at that time, I wasn't really as confident, so I was just doing my little poetry thing. And, and it wasn't until this guy, uh, you know, for those of you I can't see, uh, Drew Guns is in the studio with us. Yeah, uh, if it, this guy came along and was like, yo, you write poetry? And I was like, yeah, because he was freestyling that even back then. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, sure. He would listen to my poems and he'd be like, yo, you should try and put those to some beats. And I was like, nah, man, what you talking about? And he was like, go ahead. So I tried it every once in a while and, you know, here we go. Here I am now, one of the illest MCs to ever <laughs> bless the mic and yeah. be in existence. But, uh, you know, shout out to Drew Guns for helping me uh, find the confidence to do so. That's real, man. I would also say Eminem, too, like, they made me think it was possible. <laughs> yeah, like he Michael definitely broke down music the barriers. in general, but Eminem, like, I remember I was just going through something. I remember uh, I was punished for the whole summer, and I literally filled the whole book up. And that was just like, it wasn't organized, it wasn't really hooks, it was just straight rhymes, Bars. rhymes, rhymes. And then I got a little more organized as I went, but I remember I, it was around the Eminem show. Wow, that's my favorite um, Eminem album. Favorite M album. Eminem show yeah mm -hmm. yeah I remember I was just home and that album like was literally like a little bit of everything it was like a doctor a therapist a yep. psychologist got a little, and, little or, political like, sprinkled in there and it was like my workout partner it was dope man and then, shout out to him he just put out an album facts did you hear it I did hear what it. do you think of it personally man I think what's the what number album is it like eight uh, nine eight yeah I think eight or nine I feel like he raised the bar every time and I think it got to a point where he couldn't 
keep raising the bar and i think the sound of music is so different now yeah so, and a lot of people listen one time and they're like oh well you know but where we've grown up in the whole like hear it on the radio a million times forcing us to like something Facts. but now we have all these choices i think if you listen to it a few times you could actually catch what he's saying but if you listen on the first time and you you rate it it, you're not even in really a position to rate it from the As first listen, like I, on an iPod. I feel like mini the, speaker. The true M fans will appreciate it for what it is. You know exactly. what I mean? Because I heard parts of it that made me like almost tear up. Them, you know, that nostalgia you get from being an M M&M and M fan, and the song "Bad Husband." Where he's that like, was that remember. was so real, like, cause you know, as Eminem fans, we went, we all these years, we hear him talking about his baby moms in a negative light and bashing her. So for him to, to muster up the courage to create a song, letting us know that that was wrong and how that's affecting his grown daughter, like that's real shit. Like how do yeah. you, how could you not respect that? You know what I'm saying? So we got to give Eminem his 444. Like we gave Jay his 444. That's Everybody up. dropped their 444 this year. Saha, um, who else? Uh, Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? And everyone's like, I don't get it. What damn is what is damn about? It's about religion and faith. Mm. Listen to it again and then listen to it backwards. And then listen to that was then this is now by Intel. You already know, go to IntelMakesMusic.com. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah, man. Definitely a dope album. Um, speaking of your album, who helped you make who helped you work on it? Writers, producers, so, support system. Shout out to Sean Strange. He linked me up with this studio called Stone Brown Studios. That's where the album was recorded, mixed, and mastered. Shout out to Dennis. He's the engineer that did it. Um, it was just me and Dennis, pretty much. We was just in the lab cooking. Um, and then I have I have some features on there. Um, I, I don't. My memory is not as good as it used to be since me and Mary Jane hooked up. But um, you know, each artist that I had featured, I would have them come in, and it would just be me and them to work on their record. And then they would contribute to their record. But then also, if I had time, I would do work on other records. So if they was there, they would help contribute, you know, whether it be a hook or, uh, you know, add this, remove that. Um, shout out to the producers, mostly international, couple local. Um, sent me beats, sent me mad beats that I had to pick through and comb through. And I finally, you know, selected and whittled it down to these, these joints. Um, but most the writing, if... I did all my own writing, obviously, but if someone is on the hook or provides their a verse, you know, they wrote that themselves. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was just me and Dennis trying to figure out, you know, what to add here, you know, adjust this mix, so on and so forth. And then uh, once it was like the references, I would play for the homies and the homies would give me critiques and stuff like that. And that's pretty much how I work. Sick, man. Yeah, it takes a, it takes a village, you know what I'm saying, community. Yeah, man. Speaking of the album, let's get into one of the tracks, um, and then we'll get right back into the interview. Sounds good. Let's do it. The beat. Whoa. Yeah, that, that was, was a, dope, man. Yeah, I love that record. Shout out to Sif, Sick in the Head. <laughs> Shout out to him, yo. Did you mention, did you say something about him being at the event on the 6th? Oh, yeah, yeah. I might record, <laughs> I might perform that joint okay. at the show we got at the 6th. It happens in Staten at Flagship Brewery. Um, because I never performed that record before. And this is Sif is blessing the stage. He got a set. He going to be doing some joints. Mm. So I figured since we both going to be there, we might as well do it. I don't know. I, I sent my music into the DJ already, but I might have to okay. make some room. That makes sense, man. That's dope, man. So how many tracks were on the album? Uh, if memory serves me correct, this, there's 19 joints on that, including, s including the skits. Dope, dope. I know this may be a, a tough question, but which one is your favorite? You know, and it's why? actually different every day. It is a tough question. Some days it's not. I, I, I don't know. Every day, every time I go and listen to it, I have a different mm. favorite track. That's good. But... Probably King Arthur, King Arthur. Okay. because the subject matter, I feel like, you know, no one's really out here rapping about medieval times like that. And then the beat is fire. And then, you know, I do my little voice switchy uppy thingy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like that record. Like, I don't know. I just when it come on, I just I might do that record as well. But yeah, that's that's right now. That's my favorite on the album. King Arthur. King Arthur okay. Yeah, I like that. Also, I, you know, I skipped that beat when I first heard it. I was like, this is trash. 
And then I went back and listened to it like two days later. I was smacked. I was like, oh, this is fire. Mm-hmm. And then I came up and then a the hook hit me immediately. And then once I got the hook down, then the bar started coming. It's interesting. Yeah. Sometimes you got to just be in the mood or the vibe, but it has a big effect. Facts. And, I, you know, I was going through the site. Um, this has come up several times. We all know your, your pops. He's he's in the legendary group, the Wu Tang. Shout out to the Universal God. That's we have a lot of people commenting saying your dad is a damn legend. Soundtrack to my childhood. Are you really his son? <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to you, God. Yeah, he got a mixtape coming out too. It's coming. Uh, Bring back God. So yeah, well, he got an album coming out. Uh, I don't know awesome. when, but that's gonna be fire. And then he has a mixtape coming out in February called Bring Back God Two. He usually drops a mixtape before his albums, and it's gonna be Sick. fire. Got DJ Green Lantern beats on hey, there, cuts on nice. there. But enough about him. It's about me. Yeah, yes, yeah. I am the heir to the throne Where? of the W, the DNA, double helix, W. What's good? <laughs> Was it maybe one more question? Yes. Was it difficult? Or was it because it's a big shadow to, to fill? Absolutely. So how did you deal with it? What was your work ethic? Did you get good advice? Like, did you, Was it just by example? You see him just going in. And- a lot of the music, I, I did a lot of things without telling them. Not that they didn't know, but like, you know, it's just when you're a certain age and you're doing Word. music, it's like, okay, it's just getting it out of his system. Word. Um, I didn't really start taking it seriously about maybe a year or two ago where I was like, okay, I can do this. And not just on a talent level, like I can go, I can do it, meaning like what everything else that comes along with it, you know what I'm saying? The mental anguish, the physical anguish, and so on and so forth. Because it's not, you you can't just be ill now, you know what I mean? You got to be ill and you got to be a warrior and you got to be ready to hit the front lines and do what you got to do. True. Once I started taking it seriously, that's when they started to actually look at me a different light and like, okay, we knew you was nice, but now we see that look in your eyes. So now we don't have a choice. You're going to do this. So we might as well drop mm-hmm. gems when we can, you know what I'm saying? They're not handing anything to me because I'm still grinding out here do- exactly. solo dolo so like, I walk into a lot of rooms where people are like I don't know who the hell you are you know sometimes exactly. I walk in a room and people are like oh my god da, 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 da. but it's like yo I'm still grinding so um, but it in terms of difficulty it's just the same amount of difficulty that comes with every other artist trying to make it I don't really feel any more added difficulty trying to fill their shoes because they made music that I'm not making you know what I'm saying and exactly. you can't touch that catalog there's nothing you can there's nothing I could put out that's touching that catalog what I can exactly. try to do with myself is just create music that's up to par with that in the mm-hmm. long run and longevity wise because I'm playing a long game you know what I'm saying I'm making that's songs up. that could change lives could could change moods could uplift you know, I'm not just making bangers to give me a quick fifteen hundred dollars or give me a quick fifteen thousand or whatever the the yeah, going yeah. rate is for these bangers and people out here selling their souls. But um, right. yeah, I just That's focus on the art and creating the best that I can from within. Um, I haven't really gotten too much of that though. Of yeah, oh, yeah. you trying to fill the shoes? You trying to do this? You trying to do that? Because they, you know, people when they they hear my music, they see the originality. Exactly. You know, That's real, man. I feel like in any art that we're in. The work speaks for itself. So, like, absolutely, Bach could have had a son, <laughs> but if he couldn't just get on, if he wasn't ridiculous. Facts, you absolutely. Know, and no matter how, you know, we know there's a there's a family that owns a bunch of hotels, mm-hmm. and their daughter makes music, and there's this whole like. Paris Hilton? She <laughs> yeah. sings? She, I f- totally forgot. She gets all she gets hundred thousand dollar beats from Africa. Wow, Jack like, that's a that's a travesty. And it's but when you hear it, you know. And it's like she's cool in her own way, but mm-hmm. like when it comes to talent in that world, mm-hmm. it's debatable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. when we hear your stuff, no matter who you're related to, the work speaks for itself. Thank you. So that's great, man. Um Maybe one last question about him. What was one thing that you learned from him that you've taken with you? Um, oh, man, I learned a lot. He's a great teacher. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, he's a rolling stone. Papa's a rolling stone. So, uh, you know, the Wu-Tang legacy has taken some of our time. You know what I mean? But Word. it's always, at the end of the day, that's worth it. 
uh, and I learned a great many things from him, but one of the things I guess is popping in my head right now that I can say, because I don't want to reveal too much of the gems in the treasure chest, is that lions breed lions. So what that means is I used to be like, damn, like, you know, I wish he was around like uh, my friend's fathers were around, mm. right? Then I'm like, but you look at a lion. A lion doesn't stay with the cubs. A lion mates with the lioness. The lioness stays with the cubs and does, does her job. And then the cubs look at the lion as what to be, and they become lions. Mm. So even though he wasn't around, I still have him to look up to and, and to see the type of man mm. that I'm going to become eventually. You know what I'm saying? So lions breed lions. That's real, man. I like that. Thank you. So a, bit, a thing with me that's really big in tow is having goals, having dreams. I feel like it really keeps me going. It gives me a mission in life just to help other people and find out what's important to them. We know you put out the album. We see you actively taking, taking action on your dreams. Is there a dream that you haven't hit yet or what's your next dream? Now you did the album. We saw you on stage, uh, summer stage. You got this show coming up on the 6th. What's one of your upcoming dreams that that's still like in the queue? Uh, definitely, definitely going on tour. Okay. Going on tour is a dream of mine. And I feel like it's one of the closer ones that's a little bit more achievable in, in the upcoming months. You know what I'm saying? In 2018, I already got some text messages and some phone calls from some very influential people that made me smile. You know what I'm saying? I'm not guaranteed. I don't know. Nothing is a guarantee at the end of the day until it's happening. So I'm not getting super excited about anything until it's happening. But 2018 is looking pretty good. And that's my, my next dream in the queue is to go on tour, whether it be a small local tri-state college tour or if i actually get a chance to go overseas because you know they starting to, my buzz over there starting to get big and heavy shout out to the snow goons and sean strange not bro for that helping build my buzz over there um but yeah touring is definitely next up that's real man i i ask a lot of artists that hit this um hit the type 88 show you know a lot of it is visual a lot of it is being real with yourself like we may say, oh, I want to open up for Coldplay on tour. We kind of know our position in the game. We know that we're here, they're there. In reality, that's something that you could see possible in the next year. Someone who is on tour, someone who's out there. Maybe you don't know them. Maybe you do. Who do you see yourself actually opening up for? Because I feel like it all starts with the visual. Uh -huh. And then it's like, if it's... Tory Lanez, uh -huh. I don't know, random. Jordan Lucas. There you go. I could I could see myself opening up with Jordan Lucas because Jordan Lucas is about to. He's on fire right now. Shout out to Jordan Lucas. He um he was on tour with Token and Hobson, and him and and, and Token was opening up for Hobson, mm. and now he's on fire. And I I, I he'll That's be he'll, he'll he'll surpass Hobson. In over the next couple of months, you know, 2018 is probably be his year. So I can see myself opening up for Jordan Lucas. Um, it's another artist on the rise, and you know, his year is looking like it's about to be phenomenal. By the name of uh, his name is JID. JID. I can see myself okay. open up with him, and all, you know what I'm saying. Shout out to J Cole and the whole Dreamville camp. Mm -hmm. um, Joey Badass. You know what I'm saying. That's I met real. Joey a couple of times. I got the rom for him one time when, when my first trip to LA. I was at a music video shoot for, for Devastated. And I uh, was one of the extras, nice. and then I stayed all the way to the end, and I got to chop it up with him for a few minutes before he had to go. Um, now, this is a stretch, because they super-duper stars, but <laughs> anybody in TDE, you know what I'm saying? I open up for SZA, shout out to SZA. I open up for Isaiah Rashad, I open up for Schoolboy, anybody in the there TDE camp, because I, I, I definitely love them all. There you go, you know, I, I feel like that's, the, that's a good step, if you could actually see it. Because I feel like things have to align. As you know, Jordan and Lucas opened up for Hobson. The similar vibe, you know what I'm saying? Like, it makes sense. So the fact that you could kind of, you can make it make sense. Facts. I think that's a great step. And now you could actually work backwards. Who do you hit up? Absolutely. Who do you email? Absolutely. Who do you, and you're not going to waste time hitting up Rihanna's people. Facts. You didn't say that. <laughs> you know, you didn't say do a Lipa. You didn't, you didn't want to open up for Kaylani. You know, you kind of figured out 
so that i feel like that's so important with the with the dreams you could kind of put them in little compartments facts and you kind of know the families of how what else you got to do because a dream oh, a lot of the time it's like a dozen things yeah you have to do. i have an organized mind you know what i mean i try and keep my mind as organized as my rhymes uh <laughs> I write all my rhymes in my phone. Nice. And nice. and and I separate the stanzas. This, it'd be some real weird shit. But um you That's gotta right. you gotta stay plugged in. You know what I'm saying? As artists, sometimes we we get caught up in our own thing. Oh, I only wanna listen to my own music and I only wanna write and, and stay in my cocoon. And I have been in that cocoon for a little while. This, this I'm working on another project that is coming out twenty eighteen. I don't know when, but I'm working on it and I went in a little bit of a cocoon where I was like, yo, I'm not really, I don't want to listen to this album. I don't want to listen to it out. But you have to stay plugged in and see what the people want, what the people listen to, what the people don't That's like. Tough. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and what what is the vein, the pulse of, of the sound. So exactly, it's important. I feel like one of our most popular artists, probably of the decade, Kanye, I think that's all he does. It's yeah. Like Travis Scott, you're popping. You didn't pop so much. Come here. Yep. Kid Cudi, yep. you... Are writing really good songs no one knows about you come here mm -hmm, write mm -hmm. songs with me he we all make designer this together, let's see if designer saying? got another hit in him oh i don't know if that was kanye or pusher but they brought him over they was like oh yeah 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 let's exactly. see what happens with this guy and now yeah, he's yeah. not delivering as much so it's like there's the, that's there's that side of it too like you got that great oh you're doing that come over here and be a success but then you're also taking a risk and i think exactly. designer might be good music's first bad investment mm. <laughs> yeah man and i i think yeah, however that goes, I feel like it's, especially with music, you, people say, oh, I never want to be put in a box. Of course not. But I feel like if you're an artist and you want to grow, especially, I feel like I've seen art, I've seen Tory Lanez open up for G-Eazy. And then I've seen Tory Lanez have his own tour the next year. Yep. I've seen G-Eazy. grinding. Like I toured with G-Eazy five years ago. I've seen G-Eazy open up for Hoodie Allen. Next year he had his tour. Yeah, G Easy's on fire right now. Yeah, he's really on Shout fire. Shout out to G Easy and Hoodie Allen. I heard some Hoodie Allen stuff when I was in college. Everyone was like, "Yo, you heard of Hoodie Allen?" And I was like, "Nah." And they played. I was like, "Yo, this is hilarious. I love yeah. it." Yeah, you know, and it was like them knowing, like G's camp knew that Hoodie was doing his thing. You know, so I feel like that's so important that, and I could see it. I could see you and opening up for Jordan, and I feel like his crowd would, would be open because you know, you know, when you do a show and no one knows your shit. It's like, harder. Yeah, whatever. It's, We're gonna but go get food. At that point, but I feel like they're open at those tours. Yeah, absolutely. Those kids are ready to His music that shit. is so like you have to be a certain type of hip hop head in order to really vibe with Joiner. And I feel like if you at the shows, like you paid your hard on money to see Joiner, you already the type of hip hop person that even though you don't know who I am, if you actually there for a show and actually there yeah, to yeah. listen, when we're done, you'll be a fan. You're open exactly. Which we saw at the Hoodie Allen tour, which he easy they didn't know him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> next year they're all at his show so yeah man that's and cardi cool. b is another prime example of that you know what i mean i remember when years ago you know my friends would be like look, look at this stripper on instagram she wilding she's so funny and i never really thought she was funny because it was annoying mm -hmm. and then she went from that to love and hip-hop which i didn't watch either because that's annoying but her progression you can't you can't argue and then now she's True. number one record meeting with beyonce and beefing with Nikki, like she's in it to win it like she's <laughs> culturally relevant you know what yep. i mean her bars are gonna get nice because offset is uh about to be her baby daddy shout out to mm -hmm. offset i, I fucks yeah, with offset yeah. oh can we curse yeah it's yeah internet? okay no yeah worries. i fucks with offset heavy like he's the one migos that i feel like he writes and he don't put spaces in between his words it's just like just one run-on sentence but it just sound hot on the beat yep i actually like all them um yeah man it's cool it's definitely it's like a whole world and hip-hop has all these other like like all these sub-genres i yep. feel like it's the i feel it's the coolest genre. it's growing but there's so many amazing music is music so shout Facts. out to all of it um speaking of let's get into it um got a few more tracks to play so let's get into it 